Welcome back to Movie Recap. Today I'm gonna show you a 2020 American war film called, Greyhound. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie starts with the speech of Winston Churchill and Franklin Roosevelt, during World War II. It shows the group of ships in the North Atlantic in February 1942, and there's a warplane covering the convoy of ships from the United States going to Europe called, the Black Pit. After that, the air escort needs to leave the ship and return to the headquarters. The convoy is HX-25, its destination is going to Liverpool. It has 37 troops and supply ships escorted by four light warships led by the Greyhound. The captain is inside his cabin, down on his knees, praying to God for protection. It's US Navy Commander Ernest Ernie Krauss. Two months earlier in San Francisco, California, it's Christmas time, December of 1941. Ernie is sitting in the hotel's lobby, waiting for Evelyn's love of his life. When he sees her coming, he immediately stands up and welcomes Eve to the place, she finally sees him. They sit down on a couch nearby and give gifts to one another. Ernie gives Eve a Christmas tree decoration, and there's an imprint on it, yesterday, today, and forever which comes from the Bible. She's happy about the present, and she says to Ernie that she will put it on her Christmas tree. However, Eve gives two gifts, a pair of slippers monogrammed and the other is a tiny toy warship. Ernie gets confused about what it means, and Eve earnestly explains that it will remind him that the Greyhound mission is his first ever leading ship. Ernie tells Eve that they will go to Norfolk, Eve gets confused too because she thought they would go to Treasure Island. Ernie takes a ticket out of his coat and asks Eve to come with him to propose to her on a tropical island. But Eve refuses his offer. Back in the present day, Ernie is preparing for his morning. It's Wednesday, forenoon watch, from 0800 to 1200, 50 hours to air cover. When Ernie gets on board, he asks how the night shift goes, and the officers tell him that two men have quarreled a night before, Flusser and Shannon. Also, the main butler and chef on board, George Cleveland, tells Ernie that he will be going to prepare his breakfast. Minutes later, Ernie commands other officers to call Flusser and Shannon into his office and let them explain what happens. When the two of them are inside, they feel the intensity of Captain Ernie. Both of them apologize for what happened and promise not to do it again. Luckily for them, Ernie gets an emergency to go to the bridge because the other warships, Harry and Eagle, are being attacked. He responds quickly and tells another warship, Dicky, to be alert to everything that may happen. They continuously discuss over the radio, and all the men aboard are attentive and looking side by side. They are now calmly panicking, and Ernie commands Harry to stay in his position. One of the officers whistles, and Ernie announces that they're in trouble, they detect a German submarine near them. The radio man under keeps on updating how many miles the submarine is from them and its location. Though sometimes, they lose signal in the sub itself because it keeps on submerging. They can't detect it consistently until there's a range unknown from their detector. When they realize that the ship is almost there with them, they hardly turn around to avoid an explosion or collision with the submarine. They consider it a slow speed under the 60 revolutions per minute speed of the submarine and 1,100 yards away. But they don't have time to slow down and be content with what's happening since the 1,100 yards are becoming 1,000. Ernie commands them to get into the standard rudder to avoid the submarine under them. It pisses them off since there is no apparent contact from the submarine's location. But it surprises them when it's already under them, the hydrophone sounds are powerful, making the officer in charge put down his headphones and warn everybody. Ernie commands to release the rolling fire from their ship, and it blows hard. No oil leaks and debris are floating in the sea, they almost lose hope since there is no contact with the submarine again, but the men on the upper deck shout that an oil leakage and debris are floating into the water. They are giving them a signal that they have successfully defeated the submarine. All celebrate with happiness, and Ernie congratulates everyone, especially Epstein. When the first attack is made, Lieutenant Nistrom comes to him, and he reports the update about their ship and the other ship's situation. On the other hand, Cleveland notices that Ernie hasn't eaten any of the food he prepares though he keeps on changing it from time to time. But Ernie's mind is busy since it's his first U-boat victory. A few moments later, their rest comes to an end because two ships, along with their convoy, are on fire, Despotico and Cadena. They notice a torpedo coming underground, and they realize that the Germans are not done yet, it's another attack from them. Ernie talks to the other ship again, and they rescue the Cadena. On the other hand, Epstein hears distant noises again from the underwater. Until, one by one, the ships of Harry, Dicky, and Eagle are calling to Greyhound that they are also detecting submarines under their radar, six German submarines slowly appear. The signal these submarines and the Commodore's message that the German troops are already near, three miles. Ernie commands to shoot them, 
but it just submerges, they aren't able to put it down. Unluckily, the radar is not working properly anymore, and Rudel did everything he could. Still, on Wednesday, but under the dog watch, it means that it's from 1600 to 2000, 36 hours to air cover. They need to slow down because they might blow the turbine, causing them to blow the ship. There are distress rocket signals from afar. Even at night, the submarines are still attacking them, and the Greyhound strikes it too, they keep on shooting until later they realize that allies are shooting one another, Ernie commands them to cease. Also, a gigantic US ship draws near to them, and it is so close to the point that they almost collide with each other. Another one of their ships blows off. The submarine releases a pill thrower, and it's like a false bomb so that it's the only thing that can hear from the radar. They keep on shooting because they think there is something underwater, later, they realize it's like bait. On the other hand, the officers tell Ernie that there are survivors from the destroyed ship swimming toward them. It takes him a minute to decide whether they will rescue these men, and they choose to save them. Charlie tells him that there is another ship that blows, it's the Southland. They give a distress signal shot, 28 men are safe from that ship and being rescued. Then the captain from Harry is calling to Greyhound again, updating them that the target is out of the perimeter. After the call ends, the captain of the German submarine, Grey Wolf, reaches their radar and gives them a message that they will kill them no matter what, they need to accept that they're losing. With that message that Ernie pisses off, the night ends with all of them firing at each other. The following day, Thursday, under the morning watch from 0400 to 0800, 26 hours to air cover. The leading officers gather around the office, and they inform Ernie of the casualties the night before, there are five ships destroyed, Vasco, Southland, Corning, Palm Baron, and Powell. Two ships are separately damaged. There are 24 survivors and 210 confirmed deaths. The event gives Ernie a deep tragic feeling about the losses of lives. As he looks outside the window, a call from Harry telling that the target has been sighted and it's attacking again. The problem is that they don't have enough fire to cover all the ships behind them, says Mr. Fibble. Ernie calls Charlie to break the protocol for them to protect and survive the war. From the other side of the ship, Epstein is warning them again that the German troops are going near again. They successfully shoot it, but it isn't enough. The captain from Dickey is directly telling Ernie that they will do their part to shoot the enemies when Dickey attacks Grey Wolf. Greyhound was able to miss the two torpedoes that Grey Wolf released to them. Dickey reports that they shoot the submarine, they're unsure about it because it only looks like damage. After all, it slowly submerges. Dickey helps them again because they can't shoot the submarine properly since it keeps on the low underground, and their canyons stay still. They get attacked by the submarine at one side of Greyhound, but they counterattack, putting it down this time. When they're in the office, Bill reports to Charlie and Ernie about the casualties. Six of their men are the casualties, three got injured, Bonner, Meyer, and Forbrick, who's in critical shape. The worst is that three people died, Pisani, Marx, and Cleveland. They did not go to an attack in the meantime and paid their respects to their fallen soldiers. All of the crew aboard gathers around up on the deck, and they give the three men a gun salute in memory of the sacrifices of their lives. They exile the bodies into the ocean. After that funeral service, Ernie conveys that Eagle has been hit along with Kadena. Also, he asks for some updates, but Kong Gustav blows off too with no survivors. He sadly puts down the phone as he says goodbye from Greyhound. Between 2000 to 2400, 14 hours to air cover on the same day, Carling says that he's ready to relieve Harbit. they change positions since they're all exhausted and tired from what happened for the past 24 hours. Ernie looks out the window and sees a destroyed ship being rescued and its survivors. A call from Eagle reaches Greyhound asking for permission to abandon the ship, and Ernie approves it and thanks the ship for sailing with them. Since he died yesterday, the new butler named, Pitts, was mistakenly called Ernie, as Cleveland. Ernie calls Charlie out of the deck, and they discuss their next plans because they can't attack the German ships anymore since all of them, including Dickie and Harry, are out of fuel and low charges. He asks for help from the Admiralty to get a backup air cover to attack the German submarines. They are telling them a message that they need help urgently. While waiting for the reply, the captain of Grey Wolf speaks to their radio again, warning them that they're all going to die and they will attack them at their most unexpected time. Luckily, they get an immediate response from the Admiralty, which says it's on its way, but they need to wait for four hours. Friday morning, 0800 to 1200, three hours to air cover. Ernie asks the messenger to get his slippers because his feet are worn out, full of blood and wounds, he uses Evie's monogram. When he changes his slippers, two targets are waiting for them, and it's German submarines again. It's less than a hundred miles away from them, and the Grey Wolf says again that all of them are going to die today. After that, 
Ernie asks the messenger for more coffee. The attack begins again. Since they don't have enough load to their guns and canyons, they give their best to avoid the two torpedoes fired at them. Luckily, one of the torpedoes collided with their ship, but it didn't blow up. When they see an opportunity, they give their last shot to the gray wolf until they successfully hit the head, and it floats, and they fire continuously until the whole ship blows off. They're happy to turn it down successfully, but the fight is not yet done since there's another German ship waiting at the other end. Greyhound cannot see where the second submarine is, and they almost don't have a load with them, but fortunately, the air cover comes and helps them fight against the submarine. The air cover releases bombs from its wings, making the sub blow off and defeat it. They successfully kill all the enemies. Before their journey ends, an HMS Diamond, a British ship, approaches them. The captain speaks to Ernie and congratulates him on his first time in victory. Diamond asks him if they want to go until Londonderry, but Ernie says they need to stop the convoy since they're out of fuel. Diamond understands his decision, and they get people out of the stranded ships, like Harry, Dickie, and Eagle. After a long three days, he can go back to his back and rest, and he lets Carling take the lead, which surprises everyone on the ship. As he is about to go to the cabin, he looks outside the deck because of the noise, it's from the soldiers from other warships riding the HMS Diamond. They shout with gratitude towards Greyhound, Ernie almost cries as he looks at the survivors and soldiers. The movie ends with Ernie cleaning himself first before he goes to bed, and he prays to God again, thanking him for being able to survive. After that, he goes to his bed and sleeps. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.